So let me start here. I mean, the RNC has already filed dozens of what they call election integrity lawsuits, including one just today targeting voter rolls in Nevada. They did one last week in Michigan. The apparatus under Trump's handpicked leadership appears to be really prioritizing these lawsuits that limit ballot access and support these conspiracies. It seems very, very blatant to me. I mean, they're all in charge of the RNC. Do you see this as different, more alarming, or how would you categorize it than what we saw in the lead up to 2020? Yeah, unfortunately, you know, in 2020, we largely caught them flat-footed, and Donald Trump, I think, surprised his own team by coming out against vote by mail, and then had the Keystone Cops operation run by the likes of Rudy Giuliani, uh, Jenna Ellis, and Sidney Powell. Um, the bad news is that since January 6, 2021, rather than recoiling from the big lie, the Republican Party has refined it into not only a messaging campaign, not just an electoral campaign, but a litigation strategy. So here are a couple of, of numbers that should chill everyone. Um, the fact is, in 2021, the year after Donald Trump uh, uh, was, you know, tried to overturn the election through an insurrection, 25 percent of all the anti-voting litigation that was filed was brought by the Republican Party and other Republicans. In 2022, that number jumped to 52 percent. Last year, it was 68 percent. 68 percent of all of the bad litigation going on in this country was being sponsored by the Republican Party or its candidates. And already, as you point out, this year, we have seen a flood of new efforts. Rhoda McDaniel was fired because, not because of, she couldn't raise money, not because she wasn't Trumpy enough, but because Donald Trump wanted someone who was able to be more effective at making it harder to vote and easier to cheat. And that's what they're going to try to do in 2024. It seems to be the primary focus of the RNC, and it's important for people to remember, usually party committees are organizing voter outreach and funding state parties and trying to reach out to people. So you've talked about all these lawsuits, which, of course, your focus. I mean, you know, Nevada, Michigan, we mentioned. Are there other tactics that are more under the radar or that aren't getting as much attention that you think people should be aware of? Absolutely. Look, I have said that we're not going to solve the problems of democracy through the courts. The courts play an important role of backstopping democracy. But fundamentally, what we have right now is a political party that knows it cannot win a majority of the popular vote. In fact, it won't even try. But it can't win if everyone is able to vote who is eligible. So we, the biggest threat to democracy and free and fair elections this fall is what I have called election uh, vigilantism by conservatives and Republicans. What do I mean by that? Well, we saw it in the run-up of 2022, where you saw people, where you saw conservatives with flak jackets and body armor, uh, mm. with video cameras, staking out drop boxes in Maricopa County, trying to intimidate mm -hmm. people simply to return their ballots. We saw unprecedented levels of, of, of voter challenges. This is right-wing efforts to misuse voter data to try to prevent lawful people from being able to be registered and vote. We saw 364,000 Georgians challenged in uh, the 2021 election and another 100,000 challenged last year. We have seen these kinds of widespread efforts to try to intimidate mm. election officials and intimidate voters and to try to dissuade them from voting, because that is the Republican playbook. And it is upon all of our responsibilities to fight back against that this fall. So part of this is obviously preparing, it seems, though you tell me, to challenge or question the outcome of the election in November, especially if Joe Biden wins. What is that going to look like? What should people be prepared to see? Look, I mean, anyone who thinks that Donald Trump was talking about the auto industry has been living in, in, in a cave for the last few years. Donald Trump showed us what he would do in 2020. He would, he would lie. He would spread misinformation. He would coddle up with every bad dictator in the world. Okay. Then, when that wasn't enough, he would abuse the legal system. And when that wasn't enough, he would inspire a violent insurrection in the nation's capital to prevent the certification of the election. That's what he was willing to do in 2020. Well, Jen, now he faces a long prison sentence. Right? He faces a, a, a existential crisis to himself and his freedom. He will do anything in 2024. And so we should expect to see the tactics that he and the RNC and others will engage in around election intimidation, voter harassment, trying to, you know, uh, try to intimidate election officials, replace good election officials with, uh, with big lie adherence, and ultimately 
ultimately, if that is not enough in the aftermath of the election, we have to be ready for him to, as he promised from the stage uh, just the other night, have there be widespread violence. I mean, Mark Elias, I, I, there's so much litigation we got to be watching. I hope we can have you back on many times before the election. Thank you so much for joining me this evening.